Hello, my name is David Lee, and I'm here to talk about my PD session that I presented in Corcos 2012 conference. Uh, my PD session was on online simulation-based learning. So let's go ahead and start with the term simulation. Simulation is an imitation of a real-world process. It also holds key characteristics or behaviors of any selected physical process. So the simulations that we are going to work on are, are online, so they are web-based. Uh, on the right, we have a, an example of an online simulation game. Students would take on the role of immigrants on a ship to Ellis Island during the late 1800s and early 1900s. Students would encounter behaviors or experiences that occurred during the specific time and place. Uh, there are two benefits that I have found uh, students using online simulation games. First is students can gain academic knowledge in different subject matters depending on the game. So here is an image of a simulation game that allows students to be the President of the United States for a day. While playing the game they would learn the requirements of being the President and the important duties that he or she has as the President of the country. The second benefit would be the development of 21st century skills such as uh, collaboration, communication, critical thinking, problem solving, and operating technology systems. So I had grade four and five students uh, utilize online simulated based learning and after I asked them why uh, did they think simulations should be used in schools and here are the uh, results. Uh, they first said that they gained important information uh, they thought it was more interesting than lectures. Uh, simulations are a safe and cheaper responsive environment. Uh, they provide training in lifelike experiences. Uh, they learn what happens in the real world. And I think the most important is they got, they got to think about what uh, they were learning at the time. Preparation. There are a couple of things uh, teachers need to get ready uh, before um, having st uh, students work on simulation games. First is you would have to add blocking uh, ad block extensions to your web browsers. So if you're using Google Chrome or Firefox or Safari, uh, you would have to add these extensions so that you won't see ba um, ad banners on the uh, top or the side. And sometimes it could be inappropriate. Uh, make sure to do that. Um, also, you should provide students with some background knowledge um, of the topic. So, if you're um, learning about uh, surgery, then you would have you would have provide them some background knowledge, maybe a little mini lesson, or you can have students research the topic themselves. Um, and also, I didn't put this in my list, but you would have to create a graphic organizer or use the one um, that I've created. Uh, which highlights the most important uh, information in the simulation games. And you, you should also make sure the students read every question on the graphic organizer before playing the game um, so that they're always constantly looking for important content while playing the game. All right, so here is my doc, um, graphic organizer. This is a Google document you would have to uh, to make a copy of this because right now you cannot edit the uh, graphic organizer at all what you would need to do is sign into your gmail account if you do have one you would go to file and then make a copy or you can download it as a microsoft word document so i'll go ahead and show you my graphic organizer Right here we have a table of contents of different um, simulation games. Let's go ahead and pick on, let's pick knee surgery, knee surgeon. So the students would click on it and it would go straight to that part of, the gra of this graphic organizer. Um, make sure to have students read all the questions so that they know what they, they need to, what information they need to find. And then they would go ahead and click on this link, and it will go straight to 
uh, that simulation game. So I'll get started on the virtual surgery simulation. Welcome to virtual knee surgery. This activity will show you the process of replacing a failing knee joint. Are you ready? Today, our patient is a 76-year-old man. It is mandatory to check the patient's vital signs before beginning surgery. An anesthesiologist in the operating room performs this step. If the patient's vital signs are not in the normal ranges, we will not proceed with the surgery. Using the healthy person's vital sign chart as a reference, can our patient undergo surgery today? So students would learn um, the vital signs of a healthy person right over here. And they would also fill out the graphic organizer. Go back to that. This is right here. The question was, what is a healthy person's temperature and heart rate? So they would just type that information over here. Going back to the game. And our patient does have the healthy, a healthy person's vital signs. So we'd click yes. It looks like surgery will proceed as planned. Take a moment to look at our patient's x-rays. Which knee do you think needs surgery? You're right. His left knee appears worn down and lacking cartilage, which is likely the cause of his pain. The nurse has begun prepping our patient for surgery by placing an IV needle in his right hand. Now it's your turn. Use the marker and write your initials on the proper knee to be operated on. This may seem silly, but it's an actual step taken to prevent wrong site surgeries. So this is an example of virtual knee surgery. Um, on our graphic organizer, there are a bunch of different simulation games you can try out. Um, go ahead and visit the graphic orga organizer so you can uh, test out some of these games and see if it's appropriate for students. Thank you for watching. Bye.